Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. It's important for you to look at God's Word and say, Lord, I remember this victory. Because if I'm Israel, I look at Psalm 20 and go, you know what? You did it for David. You do it for us. Lord, you can make them look silly. Blind each of them. And they start killing each other on accident. You, it's, been, it's in the Bible. Right? So you're just asking for what God... But if you don't know God's Word, you can't do that. That's the point of it. It's like David knew the Word of God. He knew what the will of God was and he was a man of prayer and a man that worshiped God. A man that worshiped God. Verse 5, we will rejoice in your, in your salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Again, anticipating the victory. We're going to have the, the banners up, the tribes of each of the banners of each tribe. In Numbers chapter 2, verse 2, Every one of your children of Israel shall camp by his own standard. Beside the emblems of his father's house, they shall camp some distance from the tabernacle of meeting, each of them having a banner. When I think about this, and you think about your house, how many banners of, of the Word of God do you have up, but you don't live them? You have Scripture that's up in your house, and you don't live it. You should take it down. If you can't be obedient to what you have on the wall, right? It's, it's up there for a purpose, right? So you remember it. As for me and my house, how many of y'all have that one? I have Psalm 23 in my house. I have to remind myself all the time. In the new house, we don't have any banners up. So at some point, I have what y'all gave me. That's on the, the little mantle that we have. Which again, I need to thank y'all for that. That was such a blessing. I don't like receiving, and I know Miss Elva told me you need to be able to receive stuff too. Um, it's just I, I, I've, I've said this to Miss Elva, and I mean this for y'all too. I, Kirk and Darley, thank y'all so much for opening up y'all's home. It's beautiful. Um, it was, it was a great time of fellowship. But for me, every day I get to do this is a blessing. It's a gift. I love doing this. I enjoy it. And, and the fact that I get to do it is like, you know, it's, it, it always is amazing that God allows this rusty old tool to do something. But I love this with David. It's a reminder to us that the banners are there, that, that our salvation is secure, that there's nothing that man can do to you. Remember, we learned that last week. There's nothing that man can do to you. Your soul belongs to God. There's nothing that Hamas can do to me or Hezbollah can do to me. I belong to God. As you go up thinking you're getting your 40 virgins and you see Jesus, right? Or whatever it is they, they get, right? 72, 56, whatever, the, whatever number they come up with, they probably raise it up every few decades. <laughs> right? But at the end of the day, I, I have Jesus. I don't need anything else. If you have Jesus, why do you need all this other stuff, right? That's, it's, it makes no sense. Verse 6, Now I know the Lord saves His anointed. He will answer Him from His holy heaven with the saving strength of His right hand. Whew! His right hand. 
he answers. I love that the Lord saves his anointed. Israel and the Jewish people are his, his anointed. They belong to him. Now, yeah, it's awesome. You know, I, that was one of the things I heard Amir say. Um, if you haven't listened to him on Behold Israel, you need to listen to him. It's really good. Another one is the Rosenberg Report. All Israel News, I think, allisraelnews.com. See, I'm telling you, you need to get outside of your normal. Jane Caddis has Countdown to Eternity. They did a special one on, on Israel, which was really good. You got to get outside your normal news cycles. Um, and I would tell you on that, on everything. On everything. Because I, I took journalism class, and everything I see that's happening goes absolutely against my high school journalism <laughs> <laughs> and I only took it in high school. And there are things that are happening. I'm going, I remember my teacher said we weren't supposed to do that. Like, you're not, if you don't have the story, you ain't got the story. You're not supposed to run with it. Verse 6, now I know the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with saving strength of his right hand. And this is very important. This is the key to verse 20, or, or Psalm 20. Some trust in the chariots and some in the horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They can boast in what they've done. And that's what they did by posting it on Instagram and TikTok. They actually took the victims' phones and posted it, the murders, onto their TikToks and Instagram. There's proof of what atrocities have been done, war crimes. It's been documented. By Hamas, by the own people who did it. But the thing we remember is like, it doesn't matter if they figured out a way to fly a balloon over Israel and incinerate it and catch farms on fire. Or if they decide to fly over on little prop propellers and, and hang glide in. All those are man-made things. They do not compare. And, and as Russia told us today, we have a supersonic, and it's like you got nothing to the right hand of God. Wake up. Don't get involved in something you don't need to be involved in. Because you're going against Israel. You're pulling for Iran. And, and if we're blunt, let's just go ahead and be blunt. Uh, Hamas was trained by Russia. Didn't know that, did you? Let's just go ahead and put it out there. Gog and Magog. Wake up. Everything's being put into place bit by bit. And if they allow, if, if Israel is allowed to go ahead and do what they need to do, now you can bet that temple's fixing to go, go up because the, the, the Arab countries won't want nothing to do with the land anymore. They'll start looking for another place. God is moving. God is moving. We need, to, we need to understand that that God is in this. And that's why we trust God and not these man-made weapons. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 6, Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall not be put to death on the testimony of one witness. Uh, we know that as we saw the rockets, as they said that they hit the hospital, that it was Israel. The witnesses and the testimony show that it was not Hamas, that it was Hamas's rockets that misfired. The proof was there. Even the president today said he saw the evidence. In Psalm 33, verse 16, No king is saved by a multitude of an, of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. Human rep weaponry has nothing <laughs> that God can't destroy. God will destroy it. Isaiah 31 verses 1 through 3. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. And rely on horses. Who trust in chariots because they are many. And in the horsemen because they are very strong. But who do not look on the Holy One of Israel. Nor seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring disaster. And will not call back his word. But will arise against the house of evildoers. And against the help of those who work in iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. 
and their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out His hand, both he who helps will fall, and he who helped will fall down, and they all will perish together. He's saying, like, whatever you bring, Egypt, whatever you're doing, it's, it's uh, Isaiah 33, verses 1 through 3. Isaiah 33, verses 1 through 3. And I love that verse because he's telling you straight up, like, it doesn't matter how big your army is. It doesn't matter what technology. You may have some new technology that nobody else has. We just call on the right hand of God. Lord, you, you seek vengeance. It's, we don't seek vengeance. You do it. You, we, we seek your justice. Let God judge. Let God deal with them. And unfortunately, that's what's happening. Psalm 147.10 He who delights in the strength of horses, he takes no pleasure in the legs of man. God determines the outcome of any situation of every war. We need to remember what their doctrine is. Their doctrine is death is life. That's Hamas's doctrine. There, there, there's no fighting. We love death like our enemies love life. How do you negotiate with that? You don't. You don't. Our doctrine is fighting you, the Jews. Is, uh, we will totally exterminate you. And we will not leave a single one of you alive. That was from the Hamas Hamam who said that. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And the name of the Lord our God refers to the character of God, the reputation of God, and that's what David had confidence in. The attributes of God. His righteousness, His grace. His mercy. His justice. It's God that, that David is, is having confidence in. And this, that's who we should have our confidence in as well. When we allow things to cause worry and stress and we, we just we pine over it. But do we go to God and say, Lord, I'm secure in your hands. You do what you will because I can't take this no more. Do you go to God in prayer? Do you seek God? Through every circumstance that we go through, we have the assurance of peace through who? Christ. Christ. He is our peace. In verse 8 it says, They had bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. They haven't even fought the battle yet. They'll bow down. To you, God, they'll bow down. Save, Lord, may the King answer us when we call. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge in every place. And I love this because they, they understand like we're, we, we fight from victory. Death has been defeated. Sin, we have an option of, of choosing to follow or not. Hamas has a, an option of choosing to follow Christ or not. So do the people of Israel. Unfortunately, the Jewish nation is much agnostic. They're God's chosen people and they don't know God. And hopefully through this, as, as horrific as it is, it brings them to a place of knowing the Messiah. There are people asking questions right now on why these things happen. How did this happen? And it's an understanding that it's a chance for you to share the gospel and share truth. We can't hide in the background. We have to, we have to be in the forefront. These, the, the, the psalm as we look at, and I love Warren Worsby, he puts it this way, this psalm is three essentials for victory for God's people against the forces of evil. There must be a praying people, right? There must be a confident leader. <laughs> we don't have that. I'm sorry. 
And I'm, I, I, I respect the office of the president. I've served under multiple Democrat and Republican. But I'm sorry, the man does not put fear into anybody. It's, you need, a, you need, this is why we don't vote on emotion and feeling. We vote based on God's word, okay? And so when you come to vote next year, you, you read God's word, you vote based on God's word, meaning that that, that candidate should line up. And, and guess what? Every candidate is going to have a little crooked side to him, so you've got to try to figure out, okay, well, how much of this does he believe in God and how much of this does he follow God? And you just got to, unfortunately, you just pray. You vote, you pray. But you still need to pray for this president because that was one of the things that Amir said. He goes, they never, never thought that he was going to support Israel. Iran didn't count on that. Because it was so horrific what Hamas did. You have to support Israel. And so Iran is upset with Hamas because they said you went too far. You did too much. You wanted all the glory for yourself. And Hamas and Iran are upset with each other. And that's fine. Like we say, we pray for disunity. We pray for them not to be able to have. Uh, uh, we don't want them to be able to, to communicate. We want them to be arguing and just the whole thing fall apart. And they start fighting each other. And we need to remember that. It's like when we think about. You know, the Jacob and the root of Israel, it's, it's like we know that, that in Isaiah 27, 6, it says, In the days of Jacob will take root, Israel will bud and blossom and fill the world with fruit. So he talks about salvation and, and, and he talks about it budding fruit. He's talking about when the Messiah comes and now salvation is for the Gentiles like me. I'm a Gentile. Not, uh, I'm not from Jewish descent at all, except from Adam. We're all from Adam, right? But the reality of it is, is salvation came through the Messiah. And salvation through the Messiah, many Jews will be saved. And, and so it's important for us to understand, as we look at these things biblically, is to remember that there was a covenant made with Abraham. We're in the middle of that right now. And the land that was promised was promised to who? The Jewish nation. To Israel. To Abraham. To Jacob. And Genesis chapter 12 verses 2 and 3 says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and curse curses those you, you I will curse and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through. And unfortunately, what we're seeing is that we're already seeing the progressive Christianity through American churches, the Apostolic Church and the, uh, the United Methodist Church urging for, uh, you know, a, a time of, of ceasefire, a time of, uh, of Hamas to, to suggest that the occupation is, is, is what caused this. There's no occupation. They've been out of it, the country for two, since 2005. They provided, I, I, man, I could tell you right now, Canada does not provide New York electric water and gas for free. But Israel did to Hamas, to, to the Palestinian nation. You don't get gas, water, and electric for free, right? But that, that just goes to show the heart of Israel. Israel was always about trying to to maintain some sort of peace and every peace agreement that's been made with the palestinian nation has been broken every one of them they haven't kept one we need to remember that that in revelation 19:16 it says and he has the king on his robe and on his robe, the, the, on the thigh and the name is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Remember this, Jesus is my King. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. He's my healer. He's my refuge. 
He's my provider. He's my strength. He's my defender. He's my protector, my peace, my joy, my life, my God, my everything. That's who we go to. Because when you read Psalm 21, when you have time to do that, maybe later on, maybe even tomorrow, you're going to read about the victory that God provided. God provided it. Like if I had, if I had the army in front of me, I'd read Psalm 20 and say, look guys, this is what's going to happen. God's going before us. We'll have victory tomorrow. Let's read Psalm 20. Understand, you have to have, uh, again, these, this is simply a biblical worldview of what, these are God's people, God's nation. Why, as a Christian, would you think you would be something else? Oh, no, he can't support them. What's wrong with you? If you don't understand, read the covenant. They have a covenant of Hamas. Go read it. You'll be shocked what it says because you're going to find out you're next. Because once they eliminate all the Jews, guess who's on the next agenda? The Christians. And then, and then they will take over the world, is what it says. You have to wake up to this stuff. Hezbollah is just as bad. And, and unfortunately, the Taliban, who we gave all the equipment to, is trying to get safe passage so they can come join the war. That's why foreign affairs... Uh, <sighs> yeah, well, we have... Unfortunately, yeah, the Ukrainian people can defend themselves all they want, but not the Israelis, right? Ukrainian people, we can give tons of money, but not the Israelis. They just gave money to Palestine today. Did y'all know that? It makes no sense. And they're going to try to bring... I, I, you watch. You watch. They're going to try to bring Palestinians here. No country wants them. Because they're, they're so... And it's sad because they're so indoctrinated into this hate from childhood. That that's all they know. And, and so that's what the prayer needs to be. Is don't hate them back. You pray for them. You pray. Because that's what David would do. You pray for them. You pray for them. You ask God. You, God you go before you deal. You open hearts. That they would receive Christ. And if you don't think that, that can happen. there's a, On YouTube there's a young man. Who, who was a Hezbollah fighter. That. That. Jesus came with Christ. It can happen. But Christians have to, and, and this was one of the saddest things and, and that I've seen out of all the teachings. I've watched many teachings over Israel the last few days. And, and one of the things, the saddest thing I've seen is I've never seen anybody say pray for them. As Christians, that's what we're supposed to do because they're made in the image of God. Just as God created you, God created them. And, the, and they need Jesus just like we do. Because Lord knows there are people that wouldn't want me saved either. Okay? And, and, and if you were honest, there's probably a couple people that you know they are going, no, not that guy. Or not that lady. Right? But we can't be like that. But please, please continue to pray for Israel. That's, that's what they need more now than ever. They need wisdom and discernment and guidance because the moment they make a misstep, the moment they make a misstep, the world, the, the media is going to go after them like it's not like, I mean, it's, and please continue to show, you know, your support for Israel. If you have a page or social network on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you know, it, it, pray for Israel, pray for Hamas, pray that they come to know Jesus. You know, be honest. And, and, but the reality of it is, is over the next probably few weeks as ground wars start to break out, pray that it's quick. Because anybody who's fought house to house, it's not going to be easy. It's urban combat, and a lot of people can die. A lot of Israelis, a lot of soldiers. And, and I think the saddest thing, and this is something for America you need to be praying for, 
the base that was there, they overran it like it was nothing. That's what woke ideology does when you bring it into a military. We all bleed the same. I don't care what you are, as long as you can hold that gun and you can have my back, we can go to war. But the moment you start trying to bring all that stuff in there, it, it makes a weak military. And Israel saw that. That base was taken like it was nothing. And even one of the commanders on the Rosenberg report said, he goes, I couldn't believe it. That was our battalion. We fought. He goes, and I couldn't believe it. I, I, he goes, it still puzzles me to this day. Like, I, I can't believe that they just gave it up so quickly. And America needs to wake up because we're extremely divided. We need to be looking at opportunities, praying that God will draw us together again. God forbid it be something like this. But we need to be praying that the Lord would draw us together again. Look, I don't care if you're into green energy. I don't really care. That's your thing. Okay? All I care about is your salvation. I don't care about the LGBTQIA, P thing. All I care about is that, look, you have free will just like I have free will. If you choose not to follow Jesus, that's okay. We're still Americans. We still need to come together. We need to do what's best for our country. We got to get back to doing that. We need to be praying for that. Okay? It has nothing to do with right and left. It's like even the church needs to draw back together. Even the church. We leave all that stuff at the door. You want to put solar panels on your house? Go for it. You want to make China rich? That's on you. Uh, God bless you. I'm sure some man in China is happy. Keep selling them. You know, keep selling them. But hey, you know, at the end of the day, I care more about your salvation than I care about any of that stuff. And that's what we need to remember. You drive up with the Tesla, we're not going to freak out. I don't know where you're going to get it charged over here because there ain't no chargers. <laughs> you're going to be you're going to be going nowhere. You can't even get Wi-Fi at the house. You talking about getting a charge? <laughs> I know, I'm just saying, I'm sure they have a, how many, is it hooked up to the gas, is it running off the generators? <laughs> so, I tell you what, I'm glad we can laugh, I'm glad we can laugh, And but please, you know, at the end of the day, remember it's the Lord that fights your battles. Go to Him, and if you go, man, I don't think the Lord's hearing me, grab a brother or sister and let's pray. Let's pray about it, and, and. Just go to God. Do like David. David was a man of prayer who knew the will of God, who knew the word of God. Be that. Be that. Let's pray. Father God. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 